Matt, we are back for season three with episode two. What's going on, man? What's up, Chris? It's good to be back. Last week was a great show, and and I'm excited to have Lisa on. And she's she's close to home, like no pun intended. She's like yeah. literally like 25 minutes from me. So this is exciting, a, a San Diegan that we get to talk to, or Arizonian, or Zoni, whatever you yeah, want to call it. But she's Californian. yeah, she's in California now. So. Lisa Anderson, welcome to Mind Split Cafe. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for asking, and thank you for uh, inviting me on your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to give a uh, quick little just introduction to it before Lisa jumps on and, and gives an introduction of herself. Um, we started using TikTok recently. Normally, we don't use TikTok. We usually stay with Instagram, but... Uh, we started using TikTok recently, and uh, what I started doing was just trying to go through and, and find people that are creators and, you know, are within the mental health realm somehow, and I came across Lisa, and Miss Lisa brought a huge smile to my face. Um, I saw a bunch of her videos where she's just dancing around and just spreading joy, and she started this uh, when she came into recovery. Is that correct, Lisa? That is correct, yes. Yeah. About so it. That- Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, that's how we got to find her. I'm super excited to have her on here. She's on Instagram and TikTok. We're going to plug all her information here soon. But Lisa, you want to give yourself a quick rundown and we'll get started? Well, again, thank you for having me. Um, I get asked a lot, tell me about yourself. And yeah. <laughs> I will just, um, I will try and keep it brief. I, I say that I'm a woman in her fifth decade recreating her life in the world of recovery. I love that. Um, and I have, I've been married for over 30 years, have three grown sons, empty nester, and throughout my recovery, um, although my goal is to spread joy, I don't want to dismiss that's been a, a, a tremendous amount of work. And within the work, I found that sobriety and recovery is, is quite an incredible new life yeah and yeah so i'm having fun even with the hard work and i want to let people know that you can still have fun spread joy and live a great life i love that i love that and obviously you you know what you're doing as far as spreading joy on tiktok it's working because chris found you you know and you were so (laughs) obliged to to respond and, and now you're here right and so I kind of heard that you're the coaches with the mostest, right? Like you're, you know, so like kind of tell us, I mean, how that kind of transpired. Like you said, you're in your fifth decade and that's, that's, that's beautiful. Oh, wait, sorry, but, Matt. I don't mean to interrupt you. You're going to hate me, but it's her birthday too. Today is her birthday, man. Oh my gosh. Happy I birthday. I forgot to Lisa. tell you. Yeah. Thanks so, guys. Thanks. So like, how did you find yourself in like, Hey, you know what? I want to be a coach and I want to help like kind of take us back to that moment where it kind of clicked for you to where I know I have something to share with people and I want to contribute and and help. That's a great question. And I appreciate it. Um, during my recovery, I was, uh, in a program where we did a lot of, you know, work, uh, through trauma and addiction and all, all the things. And I just was like a sponge. I couldn't learn enough. I just kept wanting to learn. And, and what I found is that it's, it's fascinating. I mean, the world of addiction and recovery both. And I knew that I wanted to somehow give back. I have been a school teacher. I have been a fitness instructor. I have volunteered in hospice. I've, I've, most of the work that I've done has been some form of teaching or mentoring or coaching. And Mm -hmm. it just made sense. I could not wait to share the things that I have learned and help anyone that I could who is on this path of sobriety. And it just was fitting. It it just seemed fitting to do. So I did create um, my own small business called Heart to Heart Coaching. And yeah, that is so beautiful. (laughs) Yes. You You know, and and people, you know, I'm sure it's work, right? Owning your own business. I mean, I have my own business, but um, 
I, I can I can attest to you know having your own business is work, but if you love what you're doing, is it really work? Like you know what it's I'm saying? Really like easy. is it? You get up every day and there's this passion. I'm assuming because I feel the same way that you feel like you can help people or you can contribute or you can make somebody's life better or simpler or easier in whatever way in whatever capacity. Does it really feel like work? When you well, do that, you know, what's, what's incredible about being a life coach and a recovery coach is that what I give, I also get back. So not only am I helping the person and the, or the client that I'm working with, I yeah. also take away something at, after every session, Love that. That makes sense. With, yeah, whether it's uh, a, a new insight to how somebody is feeling and how they're acting or, or, or their emotions or, or whatever it may be. Um, I, I believe it's a very mutual kind of relation working relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I, um, I, I, I forget that I'm working because <laughs> I, I, I do because it is, it's, I love it. Um, people are excited to make changes where they need to. Yeah. And so I think that we both walk away feeling like, okay, you know, now, that's- heart to heart, right? Mm-hmm. That's your business. Are you solely based in Arizona and San Diego or is it available for anybody in the country? And you do like zoom sessions. Correct. Anywhere I have, um, all the way in Alaska and California and Arizona. And yeah. So <clears throat> if I am within San Diego or the Phoenix area, I can I do meet people who want to meet in person. Most people prefer to do online yeah. um, and zoom. So I'm, I'm flexible in that regard, but no, I have worked with clients. Yeah. I love that. And the reason why I ask is because we have listeners all over the country. Right. And so mm-hmm. just don't know who needs to hear it or, you know, if they stumble upon this podcast and they, they, they find your episode and they and they're in need of a coach. I just kind of wanted to have them know that it, you don't have to be in San Diego and Arizona. You can be wherever and still seek out your you know your knowledge and your help. You know, so I think it's important, if I may. Um, not everybody really understands what a coach does. Okay. And although life coaching is its own entity, as is in recovery coaching, there is an overlap. Ultimately, in a very, very uh, simple way, coaching is helping individuals reach unmet goals. Mm -hmm. So if you are struggling with any area of your life, whether it's personally, professionally, um, or in, you know, with, with, with recovery, I help people identify the goal that they are really wanting to reach. And we take the steps to get there, whether um, it's meeting three times a week or once a week, yeah. whatever it may be. It's very individualized. It's not a one size fits all. It's very, very individualized. And, um, yeah, there's, you know, check-ins, a lot of encouragement. I do tech support all the time and accountability. And I call it non-judgmental accountability. I so I don't that. want everyone, at, if someone, simple. what's that? Constructive criticism. Well, I just don't want people to feel like if they didn't meet their goal for that, they, they, they can't tell me, of course, you know, and yeah. that's that you to say, you know what? It didn't work today. So let's try it another. Yeah. Let's try this instead. Let's get up tomorrow and try it again. You yeah. Know, or, or let's approach it differently. Like your, your world isn't shattered because you didn't meet this small little goal today, you know? So, right. Yeah. yeah. Also, you can take something you can you can build upon the little things even though you maybe you didn't accomplish the ultimate goal you can still take little things as wins for that day I'm assuming right cuz I know I do it like you know yeah the, the small wins you have to count the small wins or at least that's what I've always been told you got to count the small wins because if you only have big wins and you don't reach them for that day or something you don't reach that goal it like sets you back well, that's what the beauty of coaching is we set, I had the client uh, um, set attainable goals. Yeah. So those are generally very small because 
the small wins, like you were just talking about, add up to eventually get to that big one. You know, Agreed. you can, as a very ridiculous example is you can't lose 20 pounds in one day, right? It's a gradual thing. Yes. If you have a huge goal, let's, you know, work on attainable, realistic goals in order to move forward yeah. into that. And that's the thing about coaching too. It's all um, forward mo- we don't we don't go back in the past we revisit a little bit but it's forward movement to attain the things that are important in a in a client's life that they can't do on their own yeah yeah you had uh you had mentioned that to me sorry i keep going to the side of here um you had mentioned that it's kind of different than counseling because in counseling you work on the past you work on the emotions and the trauma and the feelings from the past and so they don't affect your future and with coaching, you're working on the future and how to get to where you want to be in the future. Right. And I think there's, it's important to, to say that we have to, we might touch a little bit on the past to see what hasn't worked or what issues might have come up that have made it a roadblock to move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that counseling and coaching are a beautiful marriage, for lack of better words, because you get to work on the past, but you also get to move forward um, with the coach. It's not always feasible for everybody, but you know, some people just don't want to revisit their childhood. They don't want to bring up their trauma, their PTSD, or or whatever it may be, um, and they, they just don't want to. They're like, okay, let's get to the point. Let's move forward. I want to do this. Help me get there. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I like the thought process of that being coupled together, kind of mm-hmm. like Matt and counseling, Matt treatment and counseling go together. Coaching right. and counseling can go together. I like that. And how, long, and have I, you, how, I'm yeah. excuse, how long have you been doing this? Like how long has heart to heart been viable? Like how long have you been doing it? You know, I'm going to be completely transparent. It's been about three years, but I will okay. say Um, it took me a while because it was, you know, it was new. I knew I could do it. I knew I just needed the people in front of me who wanted to work. Uh Um, but there is some fear and anxiety of Of launching. And that's, that's me being very, it's not like I'm, oh, cool. I'm going to start a business done. Come to me. No, there was so much fear, anxiety, fear of failure, Um, but at the same time, I knew as a coach, I was capable of doing that work. Yeah. But I, everything I procrastinated fear based, you know, this is something I've learned. And what, what did you do to alleviate the anxiety, the depression, the fear of the unknown? What did you do to work around that? I went to my toolbox. Um, <laughs> uh, I love it. I know exactly what you're going to say. I know you know. Um, well, I, you know, I am in therapy and I have been consistently for years. I have an amazing therapist, so I work with her. I've done EMDR work, which is hard. Um, but when I'm when I'm struggling with anxiety, um, or I'm just feeling anxious for whatever reason. This might sound silly, but my headphones are my go-to. Okay. And for a couple reasons. Yeah, please explain. I'm curious. Well, this is, and everything that I'm sharing with you are things that I've learned. Um, There are pressure points, and none of this I knew at the time. There are pressure points in our ears that just create a sense of comfort for some people. I'm being one of them. So I'll often, if I'm feeling anxious, put my headphones in just for those pressure points. This is what I've learned. I'm like, why am I so obsessed with my headphones? I can't live without, they're the first things that go in my ear in the morning. And through the work that I've done, I've learned this. Also, when I'm feeling anxious or perhaps sad, because yeah, I get sad um, or depressed, I put music on and I dance, which when I create content, it's honestly not only for the people who are watching, it's very much for my mental health and my physical well-being. Yeah, and absolutely. so I have a lot of tools, but to be honest, I, I hope people can um, 
maybe appreciate the the pressure points in their ears that they're like, why do I, I always have my headphones in? Well, it's, it's a sense of comfort for a lot of people. Other people can't stand it. Yeah. But, but for me, it's the first thing I put in my, I put in my headphones first thing in the morning just to kind of just start my day. Cause I tend to wake up a little bit anxious. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's the same concept of like a weighted blanket where the weighted yes. blanket is supposed to like make you feel like you're being hugged and yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, I, I've shared this on the show before in past episodes. Um, you know, me starting a business, it was, it, it was, it, it was a journey and, you know, but what I struggle with, uh, pretty, pretty consistently is, um, uh, imposter syndrome, you know? And so, it's not that I'm not capable of the work or the fulfillment or, you know, providing the knowledge to the clients, right? It's more of, do I really know what I'm doing? You know? And so I struggle with that. And Chris knows this. And we talk about this all the time where it's like, I have this, it's kind of an internal clock. So it happens once a month at a certain time every month, but, I've taken steps to really kind of when I know it's coming on those, those thoughts, that cloud, so to speak, I go to like you do go to a bag and think of positive reaffirming thoughts until, you know, I have to tell myself over and over and over again, but it's this positive affirmation that I give myself and it helps me kind of get through it. So the, the earphones are kind of like your, you know, like that's your go-to. That's It's my security you know. yeah. blanket. Yeah. But I want to speak to the imposter or imposter syndrome. Yes. Um, I actually did a TikTok about that um, <laughs> a while back. And yeah, you know, I, when I've experienced that, it's bad. Huh. I'm, I'm, I'm pausing because I'm having a hard time articulating my exact thought other than this. When I get on TikTok or I dance or I do this or get ready for a session, I still have that too, yeah. that imposter syndrome. You know, I don't want anyone to ever think that sobriety is so easy that you just stop drinking and you get, you dance and you do videos like, um, oh, it doesn't work like that. You know, like that, this has been a journey, yeah. right? And I, I never want to be misunderstood in regards to th this isn't, it's this not hasn't easy. been a walk yeah. in the park, Yeah. but the imposter syndrome with, for me being a coach is I absolutely know what I'm doing, but I still suffer from that on occasion. Yeah. 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 So I, it's human nature. I think to, to have it to some degree of like, at least an intrusive thought of, of some degree. Uh, I think it might be human nature. Kind of just how it affects us. I think. Well, it, it, it honestly, it keeps me kind of on my toes because then it's yeah. like, it's like a, a sl I don't want to say it's a slap in the face, but it's like more like a, a physical, like, Hey, start doing your homework, like Proof refresh, like find, seek out that knowledge. Like what are the new trends or what is the new, you know, now the big thing in like digital marketing and, and marketing is AI. So how can I hop on a, where is a continuing education course on AI or, or whatever the case is? It's almost like it's like an alarm clock that goes off like, hey, you don't know everything. Wake up, like get your ass in gear and learn something or refresh something or what's changing. What's the trend? And so it's almost kind of like a kickstart, you know, it's to like where I don't productive. find myself just being lazy and just be like, yeah, I know everything. And I'm just going to tell you like that. That's not, that's not conducive for my clients, you know? Well, I applaud you on always wanting to learn and, you know, exploring different avenues. You know, a lot of people get really stuck mm -hmm. and I think that's common among the masses, honestly. And I, and I'm not trying to um, overgeneralize, 
but I also think the older that we get, um, we tend to just be comfortable, be comfortable. Yeah. So the reason why I say I applaud you is because you're continuing to want to learn and grow and, you know, experience different things. And I say, you know, say yes to ever say yes to all the things, you know, yep. and especially someone in recovery, I am in a place that I say yes a lot more than I ever have. Cause I, I just love life. You know, yeah. it's hard. And sure. Being complacent is probably one of the worst things for recovery and life in general, being complacent, it's, it's not a good thing, but in recovery, it's, it could be a downfall. Can it? 1000%. Yeah. Yeah. If well, you, you got to make changes, you, you, you have to, and it's hard work to make changes. And that's where a coach comes in and helps. Yeah. yeah. Well, I applaud you because. <laughs> the 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 thing that the thing that I see is you know you mentioned this earlier is that it's safe to say that you know I'm I'm close to my fifth decade also right it's it's safe to say that and I'm speaking from experience we didn't grow up with social media like we didn't grow up you know no. And, no. and so you know we didn't grow up with cell phones we didn't we grew up pre-internet everybody had a landline you know that sort of thing right so i applaud you for embracing a platform such as tiktok which is fairly for embracing the change yes where you're like how do i and putting myself out there as someone that didn't grow up in this era of you know of social media but i'm embracing this platform to help get my message out that's got to be – talk to me about the first time you downloaded the app and said, I'm going to do a video and I'm going to post it. Like That's a good question. This is a good one. I love this question because, one, I was kind of late to the game on even downloading the app. A friend of mine told me about it, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm actually laughing and learning things at the same time. Yeah. And I knew I wanted – to put myself out there. I wasn't okay. sure how I was going to do it. In all fairness, like this, uh, it took me a year and a half. Wow. To get the courage. And my, my high school friends know this. Um, I couldn't do a first video without them. And it was la April of 2023. So not that long ago. Yeah. yeah. And, um, then all the like the all the technical stuff on editing and all you know putting you know f text and captions and hashtags yeah oh i had friends help me i did not <laughs> learn that on my own <laughs> i got friends not, to help me and you too know don't who, worry yeah i mean i uh, my girlfriend would facetime me and she's like okay lisa now now just push the button and scroll like seriously i and she's a lot younger than i am so yeah i I can't say I I did any of this without help, and I'm not even embarrassed. I'm not even embarrassed. You shouldn't be. Yeah. You yeah. shouldn't be. Honestly, Lisa, I I applaud you. That's that was the whole point of the the question because I'm fascinated by you know some people some people do get older and lazy and archaic, and they're like, well, I didn't grow up with that, so I, there's no reason for me to learn that, you know. Right. And so for you to say, hey, I'm going to embrace this and I'm going to reach people because you're re you're tapping into a whole different audience segment now. You know, the younger generation that that's all they know is TikTok. That's the only app that they have besides, uh -huh. you know, like an Instagram or a Snapchat. But like you're tapping into the the definitely the millennials, the 18 to 22s, the 24 year olds, right. Where they're getting, they're hearing your voice now and you're coming well, off as, you know, a, an industry leader and, uh, uh, an industry pioneer, so to speak. Someone to a role model, someone yeah. to model something after. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know how many younger people are actually seeing my content and, you know, it, Chris saw it. <laughs> yeah. Regardless. Thank you, Matt. You just called me young. <laughs> yes. yes. But, you know, I also just if whatever I can do to spread joy and to show people that, you know, you can have a blast without drinking. Um, that's 
you know, that's really my goal. My goal is to put a smile on people's face and inspire and um, to move because I love to dance. It's again, it's so cathartic for me mentally, physically, all the things. That's why I do it so much. You know, and I mm-hmm. love that. And I want, I'm going to share a story with you. Um, and I want to introduce you to, he's an Uber driver here in San Diego. Oh, yeah. Right? And his name is Ray. And I have Ray's number. He's one of the very few Uber drivers number I have. Like, when I met this guy, it was like, it was kismic, right? So, kind of give you the story. My uncle passed away about a month ago, and about three weeks ago. And we, my wife and I, to get out of the house, she took me to a Padres game. So we had to get an Uber. I wasn't really in the mood, but she was like, we got to get out. We're going to go. She calls the Uber. Ray drives up in a minivan because there's a bunch of our friends. And I happen to sit in the front seat. Now, Ray's minivan is... um, it's themed Hello Kitty. Like the back seats, everything is Hello Kitty, right? And it's noticeable when you drive when he drives up and you get in, right? Anyways, long story short, <laughs> I'm sitting here in the front seat and we're driving down, headed downtown. And I ask him, I'm like, hey, how's your day going? And he was like, life is beautiful, right? And that statement struck a chord with me because... It's all about outlook, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people ask me how my day up until about three weeks ago, people would ask me how my day was going. And I would say, well, you know, I could complain, but nobody's listening. That kind of has a negative connotation to it. Like Mm -hmm. there's stuff in my life I want to complain about, but no one seems to care anyway. So I'm not going to worry about it. Right. So it has a negative connotation. Whereas Ray's was just, simply beautiful you know so what i'm getting at is i think it's all about outlook and perspective if you if you spread joy like you do and you're really good at what you do how contagious and infectious that can be right and the people that you are coming across that are seeing your videos that might not engage with you but you had some sort of little minute effect you know impression on then that joy is is spread, and you're the reason for it. And oh, I want to give you your flowers. It, it made me smile. Yeah. Oh. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that, and I want to acknowledge the the passing of your uncle. So I am I am well, sorry you. For, for your loss. Um, yeah. You know, at the same same token, I I struggle too. You know, I I struggle with just challenges in life um but i want to show up not inauthentically when i do social media and and what you know it, it i do what i do based on how i'm feeling so you know sometimes i just put music on and it does enhance my mood but i i i do think life is beautiful because i got a second chance i, love I got that. I got sober and life looks a lot more beautiful for me. And I consciously do my best to make an effort in finding the bright spot in my day. And that's when I want to share it. With I others. love that. And please don't take this the wrong way, but I hope you are infectious. You know, <laughs> the, the message that you spread and, and the, the, you know, what you do, I hope that it sticks and I hope that it, you know, it's incurable because there's people that need joy and there's people out there that need someone like you to kind of help light that fire. Right. That maybe has been dimmed, you know, and maybe it's a video that they see that, you know, Lisa Anderson did and, you know, and, and they, they subscribe and they keep coming back because it's that video that day that just was like, struck a chord and makes them smile, you know? So please keep doing God's work. Well, I really appreciate it. I I'm overwhelmed by the amount of comments that I receive 
with with that being and this is not a flex but you know at least they you have so much energy you brought a smile to my face you're inspiring me to get up and dance all the things that my goal is when i put myself out there and some days it's harder than others flex. yeah um, flex call it a flex it's no a flex. i don't you need to flex that's good well, you're well, helping the, people we're running short on time but one of the questions i have for you one of the last ones is creating content can be you know it's not as easy as people think right so like how do you do it on the days where you don't feel like doing it oh and since we're since we're running short on time i'm gonna add a part of question in there and you can answer both of them matt you asked this with um eric rhodes the dj yeah the dj so I, yep. yeah i want to ask this one too he's a big dj on tiktok you're a creator on tiktok so how do you handle when you do make the content and you don't get the likes or the comments that are you know that you usually been getting or you don't get them or you get bad comments someone being rude how does that affect you and then how do you navigate around that so you can answer both of them since we're short on time yeah i'll <clears throat> the days that i don't want to make content it really i i have to work very hard on just just doing it or i give myself grace and i say you know what can't do it today yeah and but i do because it enhances my mood it makes me happy um, most of the time I just, I, I'll find something that I've heard that will keep replaying in my head. I'm like, if it's that on, if it's on repeat in your head, you got to make a video to that song. Yeah. The negative comments. Um, I do not have thick skin, but I had to grow some real thick skin. I did kind of a controversial video, which I didn't even realize, realize this was yeah. a while back and that was difficult. But then I was like, you know what? These the, the, these people don't know me <laughs> yeah you know like everyone yeah. everyone's gonna have a negative opinion on at least one thing which is right shame, but and it had it didn't have anything to do with recovery or or joy it i i stepped out of the box a little bit and it it was controversial politically and i yeah yeah so um th honestly i i haven't gotten a lot of negative comments when i do you know joyful you know, encouraging post, um, some inappropriate ones from men that really, really just, I have to scroll past delete block. Cause I'm it, sure, I, I'm sure. There's yeah. A I'm, I'm, I, I don't play that game. And I just, it, it, that kind of bothers me, but I'm, I'm learning just to put it in its place. Like I said, delete block, not appropriate or call them out and say, this is not what this is here for. Yeah. Um, so I think I answered both questions, did I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. No, I, okay. I did. You did. Yeah. I think I, I Lisa, I am. <laughs> you've made my day, Aww. right? And you've spread joy, and I've really enjoyed the time that you've spent with us for this episode. And I just want to tell you, like, I am so excited for you, and I am now going to be a follower of yours <laughs> on TikTok, and. And I cannot that. wait to see you flourish and become as successful as you deserve because anybody that spreads joy and love and happiness through whatever platform or medium or dancing or telling jokes, whatever it is, if you can spread joy to another human being, then bless your heart, you know, so I wish you all the success. Oh, thank Absolutely. you. You're going to make me tear up a little bit there. Oh. Thank you. That, no, uh, I'm emotional. I'm getting older. I told you guys. <laughs> but thank you. Thank thank you for having me. And thank you for asking yeah. questions that I have not been asked yet on any of the podcasts that, that uh, I've done. So thank you. Well, you're yeah, welcome absolutely. back anytime. You can, you can, you know, you can I'm dance. Here. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, Matt, so. she's actually, she's going to be involved in the project that we're about to release for, uh, with Moment. She That's actually, right. She That's right. Package in the next day or so. So let's share her social media and then let's, let's, you know, let her go. But where can, where can they find you on TikTok, uh, Instagram? Like where can, where can people find you, Lisa? Um, on Instagram, it's heart to heart coaching which is i know it's kind of long h-a-r-t the number two h-e-a-r-t coaching my maiden name is heart um okay. so and it's also my middle name so heart, and, heart coaching okay yeah 
and same with Instagram. It's, you know, Lisa with a little pink heart, go figure, but yeah. it's under <laughs> heart to heart coaching as well. Fantastic. I'm yeah. going to start following It's the blonde girl dancing. <laughs> it's the blonde girl dancing. The fake um, blonde girl dancing. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to follow you on Instagram yeah, right I now. I made sure we're so. following them on the Mind Split page. That's Thank you awesome. so much. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Thank Heart you for uh, joining us. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to meet with us. I know I had to move it back a little bit, but I appreciate you being flexible. You are and very I'm welcome. I'm very excited to see you in this next um, this next little project we have going on. It'll be great. And anytime you guys want me back, I'll be happy to jump awesome. on. We can we can talk about whatever. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. I, I hope to bump you. into you in San Diego about uh, out and about town. And, and, you know, please, you know, just... come and get your oil at the oil yeah. store. Not yes. For... I, I will definitely let you know. I'll, I'll send you, <laughs> I'll send you a message on Instagram. Tell you I'm in Coronado. So that's, okay. that's exactly what I'll do. So thank you so much, Lisa, for, for being a guest on the show and, and you know, Again, all the success to you and, and blessings because you're doing God's work. I appreciate you both. Thanks so much. Have a great so have much. a great one. Take to care. Listeners, we'll see you next week.